Good evening. Are you on? Good evening. I you don't sound on. I don't hear you. Am I on? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Good evening and welcome to the December 17th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. If you would, silence all cell phones for the meeting and then stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, well, thank you for coming. It's a full house. It's great to see so much energy in the room. And uh, one of the board members said, do they know that, does everybody know that there's cameras in the room and we can see if you leave early? <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> okay, so first order of business. Secretary McFarland, would you please take attendance? I sure will. President Singer. Here. Vice President Branstad. Here. Treasurer Frizee. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Member Friedel. Here. All present and accounted for. Great. Thank you. Moving into the consent agenda, are there any items that you'd like to remove from the consent agenda and discuss individually? Seeing none, I will read through items 2.1 through 2.4. We have 2.1, approval of the minutes from November 19th. Item 2.2 is the following staff members have announced their resignation, effective as of the dates in the agenda. Item 2.3, we have approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of October 2018, as listed in the check register, prepared by Ms. Holderby, in the total amount of $6,786,316. And the distribution of obligations by fund is included in the documentation. Item 2.4, legal invoices for payment. Approval is requested to authorize uh, legal payments to Thrun Law Firm in the amount of $1,455 and Lusk Elberson in the amount of $220.50. At uh, this time, I will entertain a motion uh, to accept the consent agenda. I move approval of consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.4. Support. Moved by Brandstadt, support by Friedel. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And the consent agenda passes. Moving into item three, which is Board of Education Matters, presentation to the board. Mr. Sherrill. We have our December Shining Stars, and we're going to do it a little different this week, uh, this month. We, in the past, have always done a support staff and a teaching staff, and this time we're going to do a whole group of teaching staff. So I have with us, I think, the majority of the fourth grade team from Central Park Elementary we're going to recognize. So I'm going to read about a little bit about each person, and then you can come up and join me, and then I'll read a little more about you. Uh, first one is Marcy Adams. Mar Marcy began her career with Midland Public Schools in 2014 as a temporary Title I teacher. Marcy's substitute taught and was, te was a temporary Title I teacher for us until 2017 when she began her full-time teaching position at Central Park. Marcy earned her Bachelor of Science degree from Central Michigan University in 1997 and her Master of Arts degree from SVSU in 2004. Our second one is Laura Burge. Hopefully I said your last name right, Laura. Laura began her MPS career in 2016 as a teacher at East Lawn Elementary. In 2017, she moved to Central Park. <coughs> Laura earned her Bachelor of Science degree from CMU in 2015. And our third honoree is Lindsay Hainley. Lindsay joined the MPS teaching staff in 2017 at Central Park Elementary School. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree from Central Michigan University in 2016. And next is Kelly Narlock. Kelly began her MPS career in 1996 as a first grade teacher at Longview Elementary. In 2010, she moved to East Lawn Elementary, and in 2017, began teaching at Central Park. Kelly earned her Bachelor of Science degree from Central Michigan University in 1995, and her Master's of Arts degree from SVSU in 1999. And our last one is, and probably the most difficult name, Josh, so if I mess this up, I'm going to try real hard, Joshua Tuzanow. 
All right. Began his MPS career in 2013 as a paraprofessional, then moved into the temporary Title I position. In 2016, Josh began his full-time MPS, MPS teaching career at Carpenter Street School. And in 2017, he moved to Central Park Elementary. Josh earned his Bachelor's of Science degree from Northern Michigan University in 2011. And all of us Chippewas won't hold that against you. <laughs> We've got a lot of chips up here today. Uh, a little bit about this team and why we're honoring them tonight. The, this fourth grade team was nominated for the Shining Star by a community, community member and MPS volunteer. Among his comments were the following. The nomination is to recognize the fourth grade teaching team at Central Park Elementary for the innovative connection to Project Lead the Way, science teaching strategies to to the teaching of fourth grade mathematics. This team has adapted the APB activity project problem teaching process to their math program to give their students the necessary basic skills and then guided them in application for these skills to solving more complex math problems. They have then challenged their students with interesting problems that let them apply their math skills in an independent, creative problem solving situation where they are encouraged to use the engineering design process to analyze problems. Experiment with solution techniques, review the results, and determine if they've solved the problem or if they need to try a different strategy. The spirit of this approach was voiced by one of the teachers, you're not wrong until you quit. So one of you did that right? <laughs> <laughs> this kind of positive support and strong encouragement helped them develop confidence in their ability to use the math they've learned. They get excellent experience at analyzing and solving problems and learn not to become frustrated and quit when the first approach to a math problem may not work. It's this kind of teaching that also builds the bridge between math and science and helps students become more comfortable with math and better appreciate how they can use it to help them with their daily lives. Congratulations, Marcy, Laura, Lindsay, Kelly, and Joshua. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 And it looks like we'll move into item 3.2, which is Midland High Business Professionals. Yep. I think Mr. Jaster is going to introduce his staff, or what he brought with him tonight. Good evening. I'd like to start with a uh, thanks to Mr. Shero and the Board of Education for adding us to the agenda tonight. We have a large group of Midland High students and staff here, and many are going to present for you. Um, our goal for the evening is to share a little bit about BPA and how it has grown in the last five years. I think it's been almost that long since they've had a chance to present, present to this group. Um, I believe it was when Janet Greif was still principal at Midland High. And so uh, our program has really taken off in the last five years, and our two co-advisors are going to introduce some of the students. So I'll uh, turn it over to Andrea Joswick and Elaine Mahabir. Again, thank you for having us this evening. Um, we are in our 25th year of having BPA at Midland High School, of which I've served in some capacity for over 10 years as an advisor. Um, BPA is a student-led organization at Midland High School, and because of this, we are actually going to let our students um, take over and introduce what the organization is all about. I have not been involved with BPA uh, the last 10 years. I got back on board last year with Andrea when I retired from coaching, and she was talking about managing 60-plus kids. And I was like, and who's helping you? And she said, no one. And I said, well, I've got some free time. So I've got to get back involved with some great kids at Midland High School, and I'm going to introduce our uh, our council that we have leading us. So we have Carson Winter as our president. So he's our first of our executives. And Ethan Ulrich is our vice president. And Hannah Worley is our secretary treasurer. And they're the three that are kind of leading the surge of business professionals in America at Midland High, or, uh, at Midland High School. And they're going to do the rest of our presentation. Thank you, Mrs. Jaziak and Ms. Uh, Mahavir. Um, this year for our BPA, we have a lot of responsibility as, as an organization. And specifically, this year for our chapter, we had to do a service project 
Um, this year's service project was helping out veterans, and specifically um, our chapter helped with uh, um, Midland High and Midland Public Schools uh, Veterans Day. And we had some people from um, our chapter set flags out in the front of uh, MHS the first uh, the day of Veterans Day and also help out with the um, food and like overall need for the veterans that came in and presented to the students at MHS. Um, another thing that our chapter has to, what our chapter prides ourselves on is we're 100% um, self-reliant on our income and we're 100% fundraiser based organization. This year we did a pie fundraiser to sell pies for the holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween. I don't know if you have pies for Halloween, but we had pies for <laughs> Thanksgiving and maybe Christmas dinners and Christmas break. And um, we raised a lot, most of our money from that. And then also, if there's that's where you get the most of our money for like regional competitions, state competition, and the national competition, which you do. We do more fundraising for later on in the year. Um, for more individual responsibilities that our our chapter has for each person for our teams and individual events. We have um, either a team event or a individual event. And for the team event, probably the expectations, responsibilities that you have are you got to be responsible for your teammates. Make sure you get your work done on time. Make sure you're helping be a collaborative teammate with and communicating well with your team. Make sure you get your work done and have a, just a positive team environment. A more individual type of um, more individual responsibility that we have is for an individual event, you have to make sure that you know what your your stuff's over, so you gotta be responsible and disciplined to get your work done on time at the work sessions we have. We have work sessions every Wednesday from uh, 7 to 6 to 8 p.m. on every, every week of the month. And we also have, um, you have to be there for those and make sure you have, you're disciplined to get your work done there. And if you have to out of, out of that work session to get that those responsibilities taken care of for your individual event. And lastly, some other responsibilities that we have specifically for our chapter is we have weekly meetings that happen at 7.15 a.m. on Wednesdays. And the only really responsibility I have to be is you have to make sure they're on time. I know it's early. And you have to, you have to make sure you um, come to every one of those meetings. And if, you're, if you miss three meetings, you get kicked out of our um, chapter just because it's a responsibility that you have to maintain to make sure you're updated at all times with the information. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the competition levels that we have, and there are three levels. We have regionals, which is on Wednesday, stage, which is later on, I think, like March, and then nationals is around May. And historically, Midland High has done very well in these. As last year of the 65 members, 53 advanced to states, and of those, or 43, and of those 43 who went to states, 21 went to nationals. So as you can tell, we do pretty good in our competitions. And this year we have 59 going to Flint, so we're hoping for some similar results. And we just, uh, the more and more we do this, the more and more you can tell how people are more focused. And it's not, it's still fun, but there's a lot more people who are like, I want to get to nationals. So there's a lot more drive that people have now than they did in the other years. So now I'm going to turn it over to Hannah to talk about the types of competition we have. Um, hi, so we have a couple of different categories of competitions such as finance, management, computer programming and digital media, and entrepreneurship. And within these categories, there are individual and team events. Um, individual events can either do a presentation for a, a panel of judges or they can take a written test and then be judged. And um, for these competitions, the top six individuals at regionals advance to states. And then we also have team events, which are usually composed of around four people and involve an early submission along with a presentation at regionals in which the top two teams will advance onto states. And in the past, we've been very successful with our team events because a lot of people really like working together in our chapter, and we find that it's a lot more fun to do things when you're with your friends. And we just really like seeing the success that we do when we work together. Um, here is one of our teams that we brought with us today, our small business management team, and they will share with you the presentation that the, they will be bringing to regionals on Wednesday.
So we are the small business team, and we uh, our goal is to help this fictitious company come up with a better way to run their company. So this year, we were tasked with helping a small business called Anderson's Retail, which is a retail store that just sells pretty much everything. And they're based in small cities, and there's three current locations. And recently, they've been having trouble making sales, so they brought our consulting group in to help them out. Uh, Anderson's Retail is like, they're struggling more because they can't compete as well with Amazon and other online companies. So they're looking for some new modern ways to help update their company so they can compete better with other companies that have much more resources and larger pools. So we just kind of give them some suggestions, come up with like a plan, and, and we just help their small business out. <coughs> Do you guys want anything else? Okay. So I guess we're just going to go right into our, uh, our presentation. So good evening. We're Northern Consulting Group, and our goal is to help businesses better determine their financial futures. I'm Carson, and I'm the lead consultant. My name is Therese, and I'm the economic advisor. Hi, my name is Emma, and I'm Northern Consulting's financial analyst. Hello, I'm Timmy, and I'm the marketing and sales specialist. Here's a quick preview of what we will be covering today. So recently, Mr. Steve Anderson approached us to help with his small business, Anderson's Retail. Anderson's Retail currently has three locations located in small cities, and they sell everything from toys, clothes, office supplies, and everything in between. Currently, Mr. Steve Anderson visits each location at least once a week. However, the managers run diff the stores differently, and they have different sales promotions throughout the year. Here are some of the issues that Mr. Anderson wanted us to address. Based on the information given to us by Mr. Anderson, we have identified three internal and two external objectives. The internal objectives are to organize store cohesion among the three existing managers. Currently, each store manager runs their store independently and with different methods. Additionally, Anderson Retail needs to standardize all business procedures and revamp the products offered. The external objectives are to increase competition within the local market and lower the cost of production. Our business plan has six main points. First, Anderson's Retail needs to update its logo. Then, they need to establish a point of sale system and improve manager communication to help have the business run more effectively. Then, they need to modernize the products they offer to help lower the overall cost of running the business. Anderson's Retail then needs an overhaul of marketing and advertising to help stimulate sales. And finally, they will implement a rewards program to help give back to the consumers. Here is a re revised logo that we have created for Anderson's Retail that will help to modernize the business and attract newer crowds. All three of Anderson's retail locations should adopt the point of sale system. It regulates inventory online. Therefore, when an item is bought, it will automatically update the online system without through each store. This newly implemented system will be able to identify the different items because this will increase turnover rate by allowing for the identification of these most profitable items. Therefore, this can also increase um, profit margins because the, um, the push of the most lucrative goods throughout the business. Finally, the inventory levels will be monitored more efficiently due to each store being run under one central network. This allows for more cohesion within the business and diminishes confusion relating to product orders. All of this information will then be used to effectively order products by buying in bulk or reordering the most profitable goods. Currently, each store manager runs their store separately from each other and does not follow a centralized managing model. Therefore, Anderson Retail needs to establish standardized management by revising management practices. Anderson Retail will send its managers to a conference to be trained with these new practices, therefore standardizing management throughout the business. At this conference, the managers will participate in team building activities and learn to work as one business instead of three separate parties. Additionally, Anderson Retail needs to make one of its three locations its headquarters. This will allow for all communication to be sent to one location and prevent any miscommunications between stores. Furthermore, it will also increase the overall organization throughout the business. Mr. Anderson has expressed concerns over the current model of the business as it is not as profitable as he'd like. He has suggested to us that he would either that he would like to either close one of the locations or relocate some of them. We strongly disagree with both of these choices as closing the business will then cause him to have to sell some of the stock on at a loss. He will also then have to deal with the high costs associated with closing a business as he might not be able to sell the property and all the stock immediately. 
We, and additionally, we also disagree with relocating some of the businesses as he already has a strong existing customer base that is loyal to Anderson's Retail. Also, because they are located in small businesses, small cities, they will not have to deal with large corporations such as Amazon, and they will not have to take on any ad additional high costs of, on, of large corporations in bigger cities. We also believe he needs to stick with the brick and mortar model and not attempt to go back online as he has already tried and failed. We believe that if he sticks to his current business model, he will be able to raise profits. A major part of our marketing overhaul strategy is vastly increasing the online presence of Anderson's Retail. First, we suggest an updated website where consumers will be able to order products online and see products in the store. Additionally, we suggest a new feature that allows in-store pickup. This will cut the cost of shipping and still allow consumers to order products in the store. We suggest that this, pro that this new website be promoted through Search Engine Optimization, or SEO. SEO is a cost-effective way to promote a website as it would put our website at the top of search results and more people would also see our website. Another huge recommendation we have for Anderson's Retail is to advertise more through social media as it is an excellent way to connect better with the younger generation. In fact, a study, shown, or study done by the University of Wisconsin showed that 70% of small businesses that incorporated advertising, social media in their advertising, saw an increase in sales. All of, these changes how, all of these changes highlight how Anderson's Retail will need to better incorporate their marketing strategies. There can no longer be different strategies from store to store. One way to create a better community support system is to implement a rewards program. This program will consist of rewards cards that increase in value the more the customer shops, therefore creating incentive for customers to come back. This will increase profit and allow the community to be more involved in Anderson's retail. Another way that Mr. Anderson can urge his community to support him is by participating in marketing campaigns like Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday. This allows the community to get better deals and therefore boost his business. One of Mr. Anderson's concerns was that he had to stop supporting his community due to lack of profit. If Mr. Anderson implements this rewards program, then his profit will increase and then he will be able to donate back to his community once again. In addition, he will also be able to return to his lower prices as the cost of his products will decrease over time. The new point of sale system will allow for the identification of the least profitable items, which then can be donated to local schools and charity drives. This is another way that Mr. Anderson can contribute to his community without adding any additional cost to his, to his business. The short-term goals are to revise the logo, make one of Anderson Retail's locations its headquarters, and to modernize marketing practices to connect better with the younger generation in the community. The long-term goals are to retrain the managers through a conference put on by Anderson Retail, to revamp the products offered by using the point-of-sale system to identify the most profitable goods, and to implement the rewards program to allow Mr. Anderson to give back to his communities. After we created our presentation, we decided to analyze its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which you can see here on this graphic. The strengths of our business plan is the increase in profit margins due to the new implementation of our plan, higher uh, increased turnover rate, and increased store cohesion long term. Some weaknesses of our business plan are the time that it will take for the employees to get acclimated to the new system, which could take months to overcome. As well, there is an overhead cost associated with our business plan. Some opportunities of our business plan will be the increased market exposure in the local area and an increase in customer loyalty. The threats, however, will remain the same as before, as Anderson's retail will always have to compete with online corporations such as Amazon, and it will always have to compete with small retail businesses in his local area. However, with the implementation of our plan, we believe Anderson's retail can once again return to its high profits. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? Um, nice job. <laughs> What sources did you use to research your approach that you took? Um, so most of our, re our ideas are based off us because we have like a brainstorming session where we uh -huh. kind of just bounce ideas off each other. And then we also go to like some reputable online sites that have like good uh, small business ideas, which is where we came up with uh, some statistics to help back up our claims. But we didn't use like uh, any textbook or specific research data. Thank you.
How long do you have from the time you are given the problem or the issue uh, until you actually have to present it in some form or another? Like when we get the initial case study? Yeah. Uh, so we got it earlier in the school year, probably around September, and we've had until then, until Wednesday, to formulate our idea, build our presentation, and get our scripts down. Nice. Any other questions? Just a comment. I'm, I'm impressed, and I wish you well on Wednesday to stand up there and be able to present just off the cuff you've practiced, and uh, you did a great job. I really appreciated uh, the reference to evidence and, and looking for some statistics to back up your suggestions. I think that goes a long way in the business world, and then also your use of the SWOT. And, and you did a real nice job explaining each piece of your business plan, so I appreciated that. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. few minutes here. Okay, we'll move into item 3.3 on the agenda. This is for action. Uh, we have bond authorization resolution, and at this time I'll entertain a motion uh, for the bond authorization resolution. So moved. Support. Moved by McFarland, support by Frizee, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Mr. Sherrill, do you want to tell us a little bit? So this is a Series 2 bond sale um, that was set in place when we um, approved the, the bond uh, a few years back. So Series 1 was sold originally in an approximate amount of $70 million. This one's about $40 million. This will cover projects starting at Adams Elementary and continue into the secondary buildings over the next three years. And so this is a, the start of many steps to sell these bonds this spring and uh, we will close on that sale um, the 1st of May. Very good. Does anyone have any questions or discussion? Excited to get on with the, the new set of uh, uh, initiatives that we're going through. Yep. Um, you'll, you'll be taking a little action on those in a little while here. We're going to spend some of that. Uh, but some of that, it comes from Series 1. Some of that comes from Series 2. This is where we're crossing over from between the two. Right, it's an exciting night when we uh, move into Series 2. Uh, uh, we've got a lot to look forward to with the secondary buildings, especially uh, being able to benefit from the Series 2 funds. All right, this is a roll call, I believe. Uh, so could we do a roll call vote? Of course. President Singer. Aye. Vice President Branstad. Aye. Treasurer Frizee. Aye. Member Baker. Aye. Member Blazy. Aye. Member Friedel. Aye. I also vote yes. Seven yes votes. Very good. Thank you. All right, we'll move into item 3.4, which is again for action. This is Mr. Sherrill's evaluation of highly effective rating. And at this point, I would entertain a motion for item 3.4. <coughs> oh, I move for approval of item 3.4, Mr. Sherrill's evaluation. Support. Um, moved by uh, Brandstadt, support by Brzee. All right, I'd like to uh, read what I put together for uh, the evaluation. We're going to follow uh, Michigan Association of School Boards evaluation best practices in this, so bear with me. Uh, the Board of Education formally reviews performance once a year in December to allow prior year performance data to be used in the superintendent evaluation. The evaluation took place in closed session at the November 19th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. The Michigan Association of School Boards Superintendent Evaluation Instrument was used, which is based on requirements of the revised school code. All ratings are based on evidence. The rating process is comprehensive and requires Midland Public School Board of Education members to evaluate superintendent job performance and come to a consensus on each of the 36 performance indicators. 
Scores are based on a scaled scoring system from 1 to 4, with 1 being ineffective and 4 being highly effective. I will read through each of the areas and how Mr. Sherrill was rated. So we'll start with governance and board relation. We have six um, performance level areas, policy involvement, goal development, information and communication, materials, board questions, and board development. And of these, all six, Mr. Sherrill was rated at four, which is the highest rating, highly effective. In the area of community relations, we again have six uh, performance levels. We have parent feedback, communications with the community, community feedback, media relations, district image, and approachability. In all of the six areas, Mr. Sherrill was rated at a four, which is, again, highly effective. In the area of staff relations, we have staff feedback, staff communications, personnel matters, delegation of duties, recruitment, and labor relations. In all six categories, Mr. Sherrill was rated a four, which is highly effective. In the area of business and finance, we have five performance levels. One is budget development, budget reports, financial controls, facility management, and resource allocation. In all five areas, Mr. Sherrill was rated at highly effective, a rating of a four. Under instructional leadership, we have 10 performance levels. We have performance evaluation system, building level leadership, staff development, school improvement, curriculum, instruction, student feedback, student attendance, support for, and support for students, and professional. <coughs> And in all categories, Mr. Sherrill was rated a four or highly effective. Um, so out of uh, these five areas, governance and board relation, community relations, staff relations, business and finance, and instructional leadership, Mr. Sherrill received the highest rating, which was a four, which was highly effective for an overall um, value of four in this area. There's two other areas that we reviewed, uh, student growth and progress toward district-wide district goals. Uh, the state of Michigan requires us to look at student growth and rate 40% of his um, evaluation on this metric. And the district met all four core area proficiency goals set from the district improvement plan, which uh, placed him squarely in the highly effective category, a rating of four. We move on to the district-wide goals. Uh, the district met all four core area proficiency goals set in the district improvement plan, which again uh, put him squarely in the rating of a four, which is highly effective. And that <coughs> district-wide goals is weighted at 10%. So when we look at all the professional practices, the student growth, and the progress toward uh, district-wide goals, we have... Uh, total score of a four, which is a highly effective, um, and uh, the Board of Education, each, everyone had an opportunity to uh, weigh in on each one of these indicators. Uh, the Board of Education is pleased to share that we have rated your overall performance as highly effective. This is the highest rating possible. Again, Tonight, this is a formality. There should be no surprises as tonight we are voting on the score reached in consensus on November 19th. The Board of Ec uh, Education recognizes that Mr. Shero routine <coughs> routinely exemplifies the traits worthy of this highly effective rating. And at this time, I'd open it up for any uh, comments.
comments before we call to vote. Nice job, Mike. Just really, really well done. We've made some tremendous strides this year under your leadership and the cabinet. Um, not a lot to do with us. We were just kind of following your lead. Um, everybody played a role in it, uh, right down to the various work groups. Um, but year in and year out, you have performed phenomenally, in my opinion. Uh, so this is, like uh, Pam said, no surprise. Um, we knew this was coming as, as, as it has in the past. Um, it's hard-earned and well-deserved. So uh, thank you for doing a great job. There was a particular category that um, I didn't totally agree with, but this model is majority rules, and that is the right way. That shouldn't be an average. Just because one board member has a question or a problem on a certain thing, we need to stick with this model, and I will be also voting um, in support of this review. And I have reached out to Pam to work on a couple of those categories to see if we can fix those in the future. And we will be meeting in the future sometime. I'll say well done. I appreciate your leadership. Um, Scott said, said it all. Well, and I, I mean, I think I go back to one of the things I learned in the school board 101 class, which is our job as a board, the, the biggest job we have as a board is choosing the superintendent. And then we need to let you do your job. And so you just, since we chose you, you have done outstanding. And I appreciate your, your, your uh, continued performance for the district. Well, let me say this. It's one of the most uncomfortable nights the superintendent has, just so you know, to start with. Um, the other part is I would tell you that um, anytime a superintendent's evaluating, you're really evaluating your district, not just the person. And so um, thank you very much. This is a community, a board, a staff, a student uh, effort. And then i got to compliment the four people to my left. And one of the reasons, you know, they sit in the evaluation is it's their work that just reflects what I do. And so um, all four of those... Um, play a bit, very big part into that as well as the seven of you. So thank you very much. But let's get the evaluation over with. <laughs> <laughs> I would just comment that with everything that you do, Mike, and the four of you and everybody all the way and every level down to our staff, and it, it, you make us proud. And uh, we, couldn't, we can't sit up here and be proud of MPS without all the support and the hard work of everyone that's involved. And over the years that I've been on the board, it's... There's been a lot done. The budget's improved. We've got new schools. We've got improvements. So you've taken a lot under, under your wing, as everyone else has, and it reflects in this wonderful evaluation. So thank you. And also your, your um, readiness to answer questions when they're asked, um, to follow through. Um, even when, when we might, might have been in disagreement, um, we can agree that we want to proceed it in the, a manner that's best for our students and our district, so I appreciate that. I think the process with the Michigan Association of School Board uh, tool that they give us to use is very good, and the training that we went through. And it gave uh, me, after five years um, of of looking at superintendent evaluations, just a, a greater uh, appreciation of everything that is involved. And when we look at 36 <coughs> different indicators and had a rubric, you know, with, with four different categories, um, it certainly was um, a process that each one of the board members took seriously and and found evidence, evidence you supplied as well as evidence we've seen uh, in your actions, and it was the evidence that that we based this um, evaluation on. So uh, I couldn't be happier with your evaluation and with your service to Midland Public Schools. Well, thank you. It's been a privilege to be here. So at this time, we'll take a roll call vote to approve um, Mr. Sherrill's evaluation of highly effective. President Singer. Aye. Vice President Branstad. Aye. Treasurer Frizee. Aye. Member Baker. Aye. Member Blazy. Aye. Member Friedel. Aye. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. Well done, Mike. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. We will move into item 3.5, which, is, again, is for action. We have the bond construction bids. Um, 
Mr. Sherrill or is Mr. Cooper going to? I'll start it. Okay. Well, there's a lot here, so right. we'll, uh, definitely right. we'll use Bob through some of this. So, yeah. um, so uh, this is uh, bid package 18102 that we're make, look, moving for a recommendation. Um, it does co cover some proceeds from Series 1 and Series 2. Um, won't be ex expended until the summer. Um, there's a list of bidders there that we have chosen. It's been vetted through um, certainly our architect and construction manager through our FFDC, which is they sit on as well as um, district administration, and then our uh, FFO committee um, has vetted it as well. And so we are now making that recommendation that the dollar amount of ten million and thirty-five dollars, five hundred, ten million thirty-five and five hundred ninety-eight dollars. Excellent. Very good. So I'll have, um, I'll accept a motion or, um, at this time. I move for approval of item 3.5, bond construction bids. Support. Moved by Brandstadt, support by Ferdell. And is there any discussion? I'm very excited. Holy catfish. Pardon me. As I have told people, I went to Adams Elementary and 13 years ago when we moved <coughs> here and I walked in, I thought, wow, flashback, nothing's changed. So <laughs> I'm really I'm excited to, to see this. some improvements. Right. Uh, it was great to sit on uh, the Finance and Facilities and Operations uh, Committee and uh, see all of um, this come together with uh, more details on each piece. I think it's fair to say too that Adams is going last in part because there's some extensive work to be done to relocate the office and some of the buildings that other schools did not need. So um, there'll be a little more work here than some of the buildings when it's all said and done. Well and I think it was near the end of some of the sinking fund projects too um, back you know historically a few years ago too which made sense in the cadence. Right. Mike, I did have a question about the demolition. It was just a, it's an odd section of this. Um, we just kind of have prices that are, there's a lot of disparity in those, in those different numbers. And I just wondered if there was, obviously Daryl had extensively reviewed everybody that, and I just wondered if there was any input on, if there was a, a different yep. yeah. take on it or something. Yeah, Daryl, you, you, Bob and I can answer, but you probably answer it better. So, so the, the low bidder, uh, RW Wells, uh, Welding, is a local contractor who specializes in mechanical demo, and that was what that category was. So that category is for the demo of the air handlers at Dow High. That's their specialty. Mm -hmm. They're local, uh, fully vetted them. You know, they're aware of some of the other bid prices that came in, and they were confident that they could cover it at that cost. So we're confident as well. Okay. There was a couple different sections where we have a lot of numbers that seems like people had some trouble interpreting. Is that? Um, the, the way the bids are broken out, there's, there's significant um, breakdowns as far as by building and by alternate. So in some cases, you'll see some differences in that. And we did have one contractor that misinterpreted some of the documents. So, but after reviewing it with them and the low bidders, you know, we're confident with who we're pre presenting for the award. Okay. So for mechanical, I guess I had one other question, and I think I'm done. Is um, looks like uh, Dickerson was low on both, but maybe not able to handle both. Yeah. So Dickerson Mechanical, if they were awarded both uh, both Adams and Dow High plus the alternates, they yep. wouldn't be able to handle that much scope. That's what so I thought. by splitting it up, we're able to you know, maintain the lowest combined amount between those two mm -hmm. and then still have the opportunity to try to complete all of the Dow High Air Handler projects. Okay. So that's our goal is to get them all. There was yeah. 14 that was in the in the um, original application, but there's... Uh, 34 total. 34 total. So we're going to approve 14 now, with, and um, we're going to get all of them. I think we want to take a step back and look at... Um, how, how we get to those other ones. We were ready to maybe spend some funds there, but we were concerned as well, Brad, back to your question, is could they do it all in one summer in that short period of time? And we weren't confident that yeah, could so happen. Yeah, so we're looking at phasing the Dow High air handler replacement, taking down that many air handlers, 
over that summer months. You know, there's significant risk there, making sure we could get students back in. So we're looking at working with the low contractor on that to phase that over two summers uh, to get that work done. We're trying to secure some of the equipment maybe up front in pricing, so that's what we're alluding to a little bit as well, to lock that pricing. As you know, that stuff's going to go up. So mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could be looking at purchasing, you know, paying 2018 prices on equipment that wouldn't go in until 2020. So um, if we can make that happen in phases, we'll do that. Very good. Any other questions? All right. Then we will move into a vote. Uh, all in favor of approving item 3.5, bond construction bids, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. <clears throat> Moving into item 3.6 for action, we've got sinking fund alternate construction bids. Um, if I could I'll entertain a motion and then we'll go into explaining it. I'll move to approve item 3.6. Listed on the agenda. Support. Oh. Uh, moved by McFarland, support by Brandstadt, and uh, any discussion? Yeah, so um, as Brad, I think, kind of noticed in there, is we bid a lot of alternate, alternates, and we wanted to do more work than was on the scope. Um, and we need to have different ways to fund it because some of it we do not want to give up on it and we want to be able to get that in there. So your sinking funds, which Angela mentioned too, um, we have sat on for a while and that's really what these sinking funds were uh, meant to be. And so we um, know that they fit the category of sinking because sinking can be used slightly different than bond. And so we are um, making the... Um, or, uh, ask you for your approval to spend the sinking funds in the amount of 162000 to pick up those alternates on bid package number 18102. Well, it sounds like good use of those funds. I know back when we went to um, do another 10 year sinking fund and it failed several years ago, we you know felt we needed to conserve as much as we could, and um, so now seems like a good time to go forth and spend some of the money we have left in that account. And remember, in the general fund, we, we have set aside money mm -hmm. for capital improvements to continue, to continue to make sure we have funds for that. And so it's really time to spend those funds that taxpayers paid yeah. quite some time ago. But this, this still leaves quite a, quite a piece as we go forward to pick up more of these projects mm -hmm. that make sense that go along with the bond work that we want. Right, right. Is that also... a uh, Sinking fund is probably in the conversation for the press box as well. It could be, but I'm wondering if general fund's not better after uh, what's between that and the insurance, which is a whole other story. We Bob was work had been working the last two weeks pretty heavy. Um, as of today, we've turned in some costs to get more claims. They came back and said now pretty much um, they're going to wait until we bid it to, to get the real cost before they get. But I think we're going to get pretty close, and so the dollar amount. Uh, might be small enough to go general fund or sinking. We'd have to look up, Mike, the sinking funds. Did, there's a little bit of restriction on can there you is. build new as a repair. Um, it's got a few, especially when that sinking fund was passed compared yeah. to a sinking fund today, what you can actually use it for. Yeah, so before I commit to that. He might be right. That may not fit there. It might not fit. I don't know. Because that's build new versus repairing. You, you, there's yeah. a little fudging mm -hmm. you can do, but that one may not fit it. But. I think we're going to be closer than we think, the gap between the two. Okay. But in, is insurance saying it's a repair? No. Okay. So So we, they originally did. That's, okay. That's right. the 118. Good. But now we're into the ADA and some of those other costs that we think they owe, they would owe us no matter what. Because even if you're repairing that old one, you would have to brought it up to those ADA standards. Mm -hmm. And so um, net net, you know, and I wrote you a little bit there. I won't go into great detail yet because it's still kind of broad. But um, the model we're looking at is in that 400-ish range. Um, and I think, boy, I hate to say this too much, but I think before we're done, we get to 5,300, and so we'll have a small gap to cover it. And that's a little early to say that, so mm -hmm. don't hold Understood. me. Understood. <laughs> it feels early. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time, but it's still yeah. early. How's that? Okay, if we have no more questions, we'll go into vote. All in favor of item 3.6, uh, sinking fund alternate construction bids approval. Say aye. 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 All opposed? 
and it passes unanimously. And we'll move into item four, which is <coughs> request. Hey, Pam, I had one other question, though. We do have the, could you just <coughs> short, short description yep. of the unawarded, that stuff we're going to push off in, into the future of our parking lots and things that we are needing yeah. to do in the future? Sure, I can sum up the Adams parking lot. So um, if you recall in the bond, one of the things we wanted to do at Everett Elementary was improve traffic, but that was not in Adams. So we didn't think Adams there was any improvement to be done, but we asked them to bid the alternate um, solution, which um, we look at it solving very little of the problems at all and very costly. So we pulled that back off. We, we could expend the funds now, we have the savings, but we don't see it solving the problem. So um, we have an idea that we want the architect or the engineering, because the, I think they sub that out the engineering, to look at a little cheaper one that we actually think solves more of the problem. Um, so they really want to make a, a whole parking lot over where the lower el elementary equipment would be. We would have to move that equipment and it, just the way the road configuration is, we don't think it's going to work. They have very few buses at Adams. And so um, Bob, it was really Bob's idea, Bob's got an idea where we can maybe open up an area over there that could solve the problem and be way cheaper. It was quite expensive. Uh, a few of the other ones we believe, actually everything on that list we believe we're going to do. Um, I think... Uh, concrete micro we're looking at. Yeah, even that's as we speak. concrete. So Dow High, so they, they did again. a one-for-one -one replacement on concrete in places, Brad, and to me, Dow High, when you go there, there's excess of concrete that puts us in long-term, um, well, one, maintenance. we got to plow all that. And Mary, you know that building and, and the problem. We shut half of it down instead of plowing it because of manpower. And so you look at even the sidewalk out in front of the, I guess you'd call it the platform there, the patio, but that sidewalk is 15 feet wide. Could it be six or eight feet wide and serve the same way, pick up more parking? blacktop to save the cost. So they, they bid a one-for-one one on that, and it was excessive. And so now we have them reviewing, could there be reduced concrete by simply looking at those pieces of it um, going forward? That's another good category. So there were some things we didn't like in it. Okay. Yep. All right, moving into item four, which is request to address the board. So no hearings have been uh, uh, requested, but if anyone in the audience would like to come up and address the board with any Questions or concerns they have? The you can come right up to the microphone, on, state your name and address. Wait, is this about like anything? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shorter meetings. I'm Allie Noel. My address, like my house address? Yes. 904 Crescent Drive. <laughs> so, my question. Hmm. It's involving the lockdown on Friday, if you're comfortable talking about that. Like, so why, like, do you guys know the exact reason that it happened? Like, and why we went into lockdown? Well, I don't normally answer a lot of questions here, but with a student, I think this is a great time to do it. How's that? Um, sure. We, of course we do. Um, and Mr. Jaster is gone now, but um, basically we received a phone call from a parent where a student had went home that um, there, there was a threat um, and the phone call arrived like 10 minutes before closing. Um, so we felt it was best to temporary um, do a secure in place, not a lockdown, okay. secure in place uh, <laughs> procedure until we knew exactly what we had. In a short period of time, we were able to determine that it was not a, a threat. Um, but we also, as you know, by that short period of time, it was a wonderful effort by the community. We had um, dozens of police officers on site as well. So it really was a very false threat that was, only took us a short period of time to figure that out. Um, and then, so why didn't, like, Dow High or any other surrounding schools in Midland Public Schools, like, also... Because it was a, a very specific th threat to one building at one time, and so we were able to eliminate that, and the other buildings weren't under threat. Okay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Allie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? All right. All right. Oh, this is good student participation. Uh, yes. Tell this guy up. He's burning his signatures. Uh, hi, my name is Parker Winter, uh, 4202 Linden Drive. Um, this is a question for Mr. Sharo. When you go into snow days, what, what ramifications <laughs> do you have? And do you take into account all the roads yeah. inner, like, in the city and outside the city? Yeah. Is Mr. Worley still here? 
No. So I come into pretty regular into the newspaper class for all these questions. So I don't want to turn our board meeting into a quiz, Mr. Shero, on that. But yes, we, we do drive the road. So Mr. Cooper and I, um, in, in my Labrador Retriever, um, hit, the, hit the road pretty regular about 4.45 in the morning and check the roadways. If needed, we um, communicate with multiple superintendents in the area. Um, we've even communicated at times with road commissions to see what their plans are when they're going to salt and plow if needed. Sometimes it's really easy calls. Sometimes me and the Labrador go out about four steps and we walk back in house and say this one's going or not going. And sometimes we go for a little bit of a ride throughout there. So I, I, I won't tell you exactly where I live, but I do live in the northern part. So some of you guys say, talk, hey, what about us in the northern part? And I, I drive that, and Mr. Cooper drives the city a little bit. Sometimes we send Mr. Brutin out, and we also have a transportation supervisor who also drives um, kind of the M20 area. So we check it pretty pretty regular. So if there's a lot of decision-making, and there's a lot of texting, and there's a lot of talking going on, um, usually to make that call early in the morning. All right. Thank you. you Thank you, Parker. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Very good. There we go. I like the participation. <laughs> Okay, we'll move into item five, which is curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, the chairman of the curriculum instruction assessment committee is Ms. Fridell, and she'll read her report. The report. <laughs> we met on Monday, November 26th at uh, Adams Elementary in room 11, which is the foreign language uh, room, which is actually where we are piloting the world language pilot program. Um, Scott Cochran shared updates on this program. Um, the program as total entails Chinese at Woodcrest and the four language and cultures program at Adams. The committee watched videos of Chinese teachers, Zhang Zheng Wang in action at Woodcrest and Kim McMahon, Adams four language and culture teacher explained the program, showed examples of uh, materials used in the classroom and exhibited videos of the class in action. The committee discussed the project progress of the pilot, how it's being monitored, and the next steps, including major change proposal. It was really neat. She brought in uh, parents' comments and you know addressing parents' concerns. Um, very uh, resourceful teacher. Um, major change proposals. Curriculum specialists presented uh, the major change proposals that will be presented to the Board of Education tonight. The proposals include the elementary world language. The proposal will continue the structured pilot this year for the fall of 2019 and beyond, uh, with Chinese being taught at Woodcrest and the foreign language and culture program being taught at Adams. Elementary science. This proposal addresses the standards, standard alignment grades 3 through five in all in elementary schools through the implementation of a new of new science kits from Serial City. These kits um, complement both Project Lead the Way and the IB PYP and uh, will be a strong addition to the MPS science program. The proposal includes resources for teachers' professional learning and supplies. High school math. Uh, the proposal is a two-year transition that responds to the international uh, baccalaureate curriculum revisions. The new curriculum improves opportunities for students to learn and ensures students are best prepared for IB uh, assessment changes. These changes are made in a time. These changes also made it timely to update the senior level math offering. The new courses will be developed and offered, and old courses deleted as the content is blend, blended into the new offerings. And there is a summary with lots of uh, letters and uh, numbers, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, moving right along, um, the proposal includes resources to support teacher professional learning and course development, as well as calculators for implementation. And I will say that um, kind of a cool part was that there will be um, uh, a class that has uh, that's blending statistics and financial management, which a lot of people. I don't know, kids leave high school and they don't know how to balance a checkbook. Oh, an overdraft? What's that? Hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so um, the fourth one was the IB Environmental Science SL. 
This proposal adds a new International Baccalaureate in Environmental Science SL course and um, gives students another opportunity to learn science in uh, a different way, uh, different things. It is going to be offered at the 0.3 accelerated level and includes state standards in the area of earth and space science. Um, the cool thing about this is the course meets IB requirements for both group four, which is experimental sciences, and group three, which is individuals and society, allowing those who are pursuing the IB diploma uh, increased opportunity and flexibility. The pr proposal includes resources to support teacher professional learning and course development. The fifth one is high school yearbook. The proposal adds uh, an accelerated point three option for students to take yearbook, and it's going to be taught in the same section as the current standard uh, point two level option. And again, it, it's just another opportunity for uh, <coughs> students to have uh, different courses and try different things while they're uh, in their high school uh, in their high school years. We adjourned at three thirty. The next meeting is January twenty first. Um, and we generally meet from 2.15 to 3.30, and I'm not sure if we're here or where, but it'll be announced. Sounds like a great meeting. Wow, wish Lots I was of there. stuff, yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's a great segue into item 5.2, which is our major change proposals. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Ms. Friedel did a great job of explaining the five proposals we have. It was very strategic that all those details were there because you... <laughs> <laughs> you present them better than I could. So yes, tonight for your consideration are those five major change proposals, elementary world language, elementary science, high school math, uh, high school IB environmental science standard level, and high school yearbook. Those proposals are available in the curriculum office here in this building for anyone who might want to review those uh, more in depth. Those will come back to you at the January meeting uh, for your vote. And I can read um, right under um, this. It says the cost of each proposal includes all anticipated expenses, such as curriculum development, staff development, and staff or student materials. Expenses for the total implementation are um, described in the major change proposal, which is available in the office. If these proposals are accepted, the changes will be incorporated into the student enrollment procedures for the 2019-20 school year. Upon approval, the implementation of these changes will be dependent upon the budget. All right, very good. And this is not for action? No, just this for is just for information. Okay, great. Thank you. Item 5.3 for information. We have textbook adoption. We do. We have a book to you tonight for the required 28-day public review period. And again, it will come back to you in January for action. Uh, this book, titled Ghost, is from uh, Scholastic Publisher. And we'll be asking to purchase this book both in the Spanish version as well as the English version. We'll have both of those, again, for review here in the curriculum office. Uh, this is actually a graphic novel. And we're going to be using it for sixth grade Spanish as well as Spanish 1, hence the uh, graphic nature of it, lots of pictures. Uh, it will be applied both for language use as well as the cultural context for both of those classes. Great, thank you. All right, moving into item six, which is finance facilities and operations. Uh, Mr. Frizee will read his report. <clears throat> yes, we met December 3rd. Uh, in addition to the school members present, Daryl from Barton Mallow and Dale from French Associates joined us. Discussed a few topics that night. Uh, the first, the bond. Uh, Mr. Dumbro shared, reviewed, and discussed with the committee the bids for the upcoming bond projects across the district, which we discussed earlier tonight. Uh, those were to be awarded at tonight's meeting. Uh, the Adams renovations in addition. The four secondary media center renovations. Selected high school science lab renovations. High school locker room renovations. Placement of Dow High air handling units. And selected district paving. Uh, the second portion was the finance facilities and operations discussion. Uh, in that discussion, Mr. Cooper reviewed and discussed the following items with the committee. One, the October financial reports. Two, an update on the Midland Community Stadium press box. Mr. Cooper discussed progress on the insurance settlement. Mr. Jerome presented, presented two possible design options for the press box. 
Uh, number three, board authorizing resolution for the sale of bonds worth $40 million. $450,000 in Series 2 of the bond millage approved in 2015. And four, financials related to upcoming employee contracts. The next meeting is Monday, January 7th at 5 o'clock. Very good. A lot of that we've already uh, gone through with this agenda, and that's a good recap at this point. Item 6.2 for information. Yes. Yeah, under 6.2, for just information purposes, I have 10 gifts totaling $3,644.97. Um, again, as we always do at the end of the meeting, you'll see those on the uh, displays. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things, some of the nonviolent uh, from the Community Foundation, uh, the Midland Area Community Foundation are starting to come through. And you'll see one that you see kind of annually there, uh, the $1,000 for the JCC Thanksgiving uh, dinners from the, the Bergstein Fund. Um, so those are some that you have. Under 6.3, I also have an item, not of cash, but this one is a fish tank, fish and other items, which was donated to the Northeast Middle School Science Program. Very good. You don't see that every day. No. <laughs> All right. None, no, no, no gifts require a vote. So we're very thankful for all the gifts. And we'll move into item seven, which is human resources. Yep, and I'll take that one. Uh, two condolences to pass along this evening. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the families of Ann Swayze, who passed away on November 13th. Mrs. Swayze was a math teacher at Jefferson for 27 years, retiring in 1997. And also to the families of Charles Sorb, who passed away on November 30th. Mr. Sorb was an electrician in the maintenance department for 12 years, retiring in 1981. Um, and then item 7-2 is announcement of a retirement, and Mrs. Lynn Heidesek, a paraprofessional at Woodcrest Elementary, has announced her retirement effective June 7th. Very good. Thanks, Brian. Our thoughts go out to both families. Moving into item 8, which is scheduled activities for information. This is the final Board of Education meeting um, this year. For and the following dates on your agenda are tentative until approved at our first organizational meeting. Item 9 is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. And item 10 is study discussion session. Uh, at this point, we'll hear from board members. So we'll start at this end of the table. Brad? Uh, I'd just like to congratulate again Marcy, Laura, Lindsay, Kelly, and Josh. Joshua as our shining stars. Um, also, um, Midland High for a great presentation from Ms. Joswiak and Mahavir and their whole team. Uh, good luck to them on Wednesday. I think they, uh, they might be ready. Um, I did have one comment uh, that I know one of the teachers made about you're not wrong until you quit. Well, I have a little twist on that when I was I was Born and raised here in Midland, attended Sugnet School, which is no longer, but um, had the privilege to have uh, Mr. Hoppensberger as my art teacher in elementary school, which is just a blessing because he is probably one of the most incredible artists that, from our community. And uh, he had a little bit different twist on you're not wrong until you quit. Um, when I was a little kid and... Uh, he dove across a table with papers flying everywhere, and he bit the eraser off from my pencil and handed it back to me and looked at me and said, no line is ever wrong. <laughs> so I'm sure these kids will grasp onto you're not wrong until you quit. Wow, that stuck with you. <laughs> I can see him doing Sir, that, too. eraser on your pencil. <laughs> it's hidden. Is that well, I, too, would thank um, all the students from Midland High with their BPA. I'm just amazed at how, how that program has grown. My um, oldest, I hate to admit it, was in it 20 years ago, and uh, it has really changed. I mean, from the technology and the computers and, and all the things that you're doing. So I wish you well, and um, congratulations for all that you're doing for our students. Uh, and also congratulate the elementary and middle school first robotics. I just was reading about those today, and um, 
they've done remarkably well. And again, I, kids are going to be so prepared when they, as they get older and, and follow in those programs and future careers. Um, also, the generous projects that the school's student staff are all doing. And um, it made me think of this as we received cards from Siebert, Adams, and, and Northeast here. But there's one uh, quote in here that says, kindness is like snow. It beautifies everything it covers. And I think between food drives and clothes and all kinds of things, and even the generosity of our community that we read about every week um, or every meeting, you know, there's a lot of kindness that is in this community, and we should be very proud of that. And to our shining stars, it makes me want to be in fourth grade again and experience math and science and, and the fun ways, hands-on, that they're doing rather than... I hate to admit it, it used to be pretty much strictly in the book, so um, well-deserved, and um, it'll be fun to see what, what they do in the future as well. And I guess my last comments is Merry Christmas, enjoy your break, and uh, come back well-rested in the new year. Um, I just wanted, one of the ways in Mr. Charo's uh, evaluation, we talked about uh, communication with the community, and I really want to put put the word out there again, um, encouraging lis listeners to read the superintendent's communique that's published each week. Um, there are so many great things that are going on that our students are, are involved in, in terms of um, volunteering and competing and just day-to-day -day things that are happening in the buildings, and you can be really well informed by um, taking time to read that communique. Um, thank you, too, for the lovely Christmas cards from the kids, um, and my congratulations to the uh, Central Park Elementary fourth grade uh, teaching team. Um, I had overheard one person talking about uh, this particular group of teachers, and it was one of the volunteers, and he was saying that um, he was working with a, a young man, and he got stumped, and he was ready to, you know, try a different approach, and he goes, Oh, I get it now. I'm thinking like a scientist. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that, that sums it all up, that, that they don't give up, that they're willing to try another approach. So that was, that was really timely. Um, BPA, good luck. Um, that's about all. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to thank Siebert, Adams, and Northeast for the wonderful cards that are displayed in front of me. Uh, this is our, uh, notably our last meeting of the year, um, and as I said earlier in the meeting, it has been quite a remarkable year. Uh, not only is this our last meeting of the year, but it is also our last meeting for a couple of our board members. Whether or not they want to acknowledge it tonight, I certainly <laughs> will. Um, I just want to thank you both. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve with you uh, six years and four years with you, Patrick. You guys are fantastic board members. Um, we're certainly going to miss you, so thank you very much for all of your time and effort and everything yeah. you've done for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Floor to me? All right. Well, uh, good luck to the Midland High, Midland High team this week. I hope you do well. It's Wednesday, is that correct? Good luck Wednesday. Um, I always enjoyed the presentations on Monday nights in these meetings. I look forward to hearing all that goes on in the district. Um, sometimes up here we don't get to see all the good stuff uh, going on, so always good to see. Um, this is my last meeting tonight. Uh, I was elected four years ago. I can't believe how fast that went by. Uh, that is, makes me feel old how fast that went, but uh, I want to thank all those who voted for me uh, four years ago and, and this time. I'm very grateful, humbled by the support I've had, and uh, I only hope I've given back as much as I've taken out of this, this time. Um, <laughs> It's incredibly, incredibly rewarding. Um, the, you know, the time and the work, it almost, it almost, you don't even realize that you just, it's a passion, it's something you do, and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it, and hopefully for me, it's not the end of it. Hopefully I'll be back. Uh, you'll see me on the ballot again in a few years, I believe, so maybe I'll have another chance to do it, but uh, I appreciate working with the board. Like Scott said, I consider you guys to be friends, co-workers, all that, all that good stuff, Mike's staff, uh, a lot of good people in the district moving this thing forward, and hearing you talk about the bonds, and I think back to the, my, I think one of my first meetings after elected was on the FFO. We went through the first list of items after the first bid of everything we thought we wanted to do and everything we had the money for, and to get from there to where we are now is incredible. Uh, 
hard to believe that we, we were there. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. I wish the two new board members well. I'm sure they'll do just fine. And if there ever any questions or help or anything they can do, please let me know. I'd be glad to help out. Um, most important thing for me is the district being in a good spot and the kids being in a good spot. And I'm sure we will be. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I actually prepared a speech. <laughs> All right, of course, of you course. Did. <laughs> Only because my mentor Jerry Wasserman a couple years ago did this, so you know. <laughs> so anyway, a couple things before I get to that, though. Um, since our last board meeting, um, I always tell Mike as I interview um, people, I've been amazed at the last like year or two how many young engineers tell me that their inspiration for going into engineering came from their participation in Project Lead the Way in high school. And these are kids from all over the country. And so I'm always so excited because I know that we're going down that path. And so now I see you know, how important that is for um, our students to have different experiences and how it shapes um, what they end up you know, deciding to do for careers. Um, I also, over Thanksgiving, um, was with um, a large group of family members from my husband's side of the family, and I had the opportunity every year when we see this family, um, Slady is the dean of students for a couple elementary schools in Port Huron, and she was telling me, oh, we modeled our STEAM school after um, your Central Park, and so another point that always makes me proud when I hear that, that people are looking at us and what we do as a model. So with that, um, I'll get on with what I wrote. So after serving this great district for seven years today, as we all know, is my last school board meeting. Over the past years, I've represented the board as the treasurer, as the vice president, and also as president for two years. I've served on every study committee at one time or another, and we have accomplished a lot in the past seven years. So I'm asked all the time what inspired me to run for a seat on the Board of Education, because as you know, it's a volunteer position. Um, in 2015, I was the board representative for the Gerstacker Award, and so as part of that, I gave a speech on the reasons I serve. And as I was thinking through it, those reasons still hold true for me today. So I want to reiterate again tonight the four reasons why I chose to serve on the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. So the first reason is that I do believe in education. Um, Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And it's our springboard to opportunity. And my husband and I um, often say that someone can take away your job, but they can never take away your education. And my parents instilled in me how important education is, and I in turn am passing along that message to my children. The second reason is because I believe in volunteering. It is said that volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day for the kind of community that you want to live in. And we each have a talent, and I believe an obligation, to share that talent with our community to help make it the kind of place we want to live. And so for the past few years, I've chosen to use my talent to serve on the school board. And I would like to give a shout out to my employer, Next Tier Automotive, because they've always been supportive of my position on the board and allowed me to participate in many meetings and events that are not always outside of my normal work day. They understand the importance of giving back to our communities. The third reason is because I believe in the public school system. Um, Josh Shipp has said that every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story. And I want to be part of a school system that is open to all children and not just children who come from households that can afford to pay private school tuition. I'm a product of the public school system. Because I moved several times growing up, I attended three different public school districts in Michigan. I attended a Michigan public university for my undergraduate degree. My parents are a product of the public school system. My grandparents were products of the public school system. We've been through some challenging times in public education, but that is one reason I wanted to serve on the board. I didn't want to be a person who just complained. I wanted to be a person who said, yes, I'm aware of that situation, and I know that we looked at all options before that decision was made. In my time on the board, we've made some tough decisions, but we have moved from a district that continuously spent 
from our fund balance every year to a district that has been able to increase our fund balance to a le level that gives us a little room to breathe and keeps us off the state watch list. <laughs> and the last reason is because I believe in the Midland Public Schools. One of my jobs as a board member has always been to serve as a cheerleader for our district. This is an easy task as we have so much to be proud of. I'm just amazed at every board meeting by the incredible opportunities we have for students in our district. I'm amazed by the teachers who lead these activities to inspire our students in so many ways. As I said earlier tonight, I attended Midland Public Schools from fifth through eighth grade. My mother actually worked right here in this building for Midland Public Schools when we lived here. I'm a graduate of Adams Elementary, and I also attended Northeast for two years. My two years at Northeast were probably two of the most important years I spent in K-12 education. One afternoon, I walked into my seventh grade math class and saw my name posted on the board because I had qualified for Delta Math. This was probably the first time I realized that I was good in math. And what began in seventh grade as a spark turned into undergraduate and graduate degrees in engineering. And many of you have heard my stories and how the Midland Public School District has provided an exceptional education for my two children who are now in college. As I reflect tonight on my time on the board, I have so much to be proud of over the last seven years. Three events really stand out for me. The first is hiring Mike as superintendent. As a board with community input, we needed a superintendent that really met our needs as a district. And after five years, I still know we made the best decision. The next thing would be our current bond work because that to me leaves a lasting legacy of my time on the board. Every time I enter Central Park Elementary and all of our other buildings that have seen multiple improvements over the past few years, I feel a sense of pride as a result of the many, many hours I have spent involved with the bond work. And finally, the last ev event, which is really two events that really stand out for me, was having the honor to present both of my children their diplomas when they graduated from high school. <laughs> Those are moments I will always treasure. So thank you everyone for all the support I've received over the past seven years. I am confident that I am leaving a solid board who will continue to advance our district as we continue to stay on the edge of 21st century learning. And as we end this evening, I would most like to thank my family for all their support over the years. Volunteering on the board has meant that I have spent many evenings away from my family. They've always been very supportive, even when I have sometimes chosen a board event over one of their own events. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. I might need a copy of that. <laughs> Okay, um, I would like to share a resolution in recognition of the contribution of both Patrick and Angela. So I'll read uh, the resolution recognition for the contribution of Mr. Patrick Brzee first to the education of children at Midland Public Schools, Midland, Michigan. Whereas Mr. Patrick Frizee has served on the Midland Public School Board of Education from 2015 to 2018. Whereas during his tenure on the Midland Public School Board of Education, Mr. Frizee has served as board tr um, trustee and board of education treasurer. Whereas Mr. Frizee has served on numerous boards and committees during his term with the Midland Public School Board of Education, adding significant views and insights as topics were discussed, recommend recommendations were formulated, and decisions were made. Whereas throughout his years of service, Mr. Frizee has made valuable contributions to education in Midland, Michigan, always focusing on the best interest of all students. Therefore, be it resolved, the Midland Public School Board of Education formally recognizes Mr. Patrick Frizee for his four years of dedication to the children of Midland Public Schools through his astute, committed service on the Midland Public School Board of Education dated this 17th day of December, 2018.
This resolution recognizing the contribution of Ms. Angela Brandstadt to the education of children at Midland Public Schools, Midland, Michigan. Whereas, as Ms. Angela Brandstadt has served on the Midland Public School Board of Education from November 2011 through December 2018. Whereas, during her tenure on the Midland Public School Board of Education, Ms. Brandstadt served as board president for two years, vice president for two years, treasurer for two years, and trustee for one year. Whereas Ms. Brandstadt played a vital role in the Midland Public Schools presentation of the application for a preliminary qualification of bonds to the Michigan Department of Treasury on October 2014. Whereas Ms. Brandstadt served as a dedicated, judicious, uh, perceptive Board of Education member during some tumultuous and tough financial times for Midland Public Schools. Whereas Ms. Brandstadt has selflessly served on numerous boards and committees during her tenure with the Midland Public School Board of Education. Her intuitive and tenacious service to this public school district has been especially noteworthy, insightful, and appreciated. Therefore, be it resolved, the Midland Public School Board of Education formally recognizes Ms. Angela Brandstadt for her seven years of dedication to all children of Midland Public Schools through her passionate, committed service on the Midland Public School Board of Education, dated the 17th day of December 2018. Here too, but what you got. Thank you. Um, well, they're doing that. Oh, you want we to We have an announcement right uh, from Superintendent Sherrill, and then we'll move into closed session. Uh, a little bit about um, literacy grants. So as you know, know, a few years back, our legislators put in some third grade reading legislation. Um, there was opportunities to apply for some grants to support that. And so I'm um, pretty proud of uh, the curriculum division who's uh, over the last few years has uh, probably almost reached 300,000 assisting in that literacy grant. So two grants, um, one last year, one this year, well over 100,000. This one's about 150,000 this year um, to increase um, time on task interventions with the students, and then most recently another 33,000 um, for the assessment tool that's going to be used for the early literacy in there as well. So some good movement moving forward to help our most at-risk learners make sure we meet those benchmarks in third grade reading. Um, talking about at-risk learners, um, are, are one of the reasons we got into early childhood education with pre-primary center um, was some of those at-risk learners, so it continues to expand. Um, we had gotten a uh, notice a couple of weeks ago that we probably weren't going to qualify for more seats and then suddenly we got a notice that we did qualify for more seats and so we've taken advantage um, I, I've heard today we filled all those seats already so we've already moved quickly on that um, moving forward um, so we are now serving about 120 children over the pre-primary not all at risk but a vast majority of them are um, and so that's going to be a nice intervention um, as we go and we only get better and better as we um, are just what three or four months into opening that center as we go forward. School safety, Friday was a good example. Um, and so we review after every incident and, um, you know, try to get better at all those responses. We've uh, obviously have added a bunch of new tools um, and are still getting used to them. We did try to use Crisis Go. We had a little bump and that we didn't send it out the right way. Jeff was in a little bit of a hurry. And so um, we'll get better and we're going to review. We, get, we had some ideas today um, on how we're going to do that. But um, some of the things that we've done there in school safety, just to keep in mind, if we've obviously had a, the communication device Crisis Go. We've had our digit radio videos are um, pretty much in place right now, so they just got there, a little bit of training to follow, but that's going to be a real powerful piece as well throughout the district. Um, then our ALICE training, um, we introduced it in the fall. Our administrators in January uh, go and become trainers of the trainers, and then they begin to trans uh, train our staff, so that's going to be a nice piece as well. Uh, we applied for that school safety grant and got um, that, that money, um, 200000 Brian. 200000 there, and so that's going to be safety filming, window filming and door lockdown, which um, Brian's got the RFP ready to go to go out for that. We have to bid that with that dollar amount as well. You should have that coming to you in the future. 
um, tabletop exercises. So as the county emergency team, we've been preparing for that. In the spring, we'll do a tabletop with next year. The plan is to actually do a full blown practice in one of our buildings. Um, so we, you can see we're moving a long way. And then, of course, to support with the school resource officers and all of our mental health initiatives, I gave you a flyer, some PD training. Um, so Penny's been a good liaison to that group as well. So a lot of stuff moving in on school safety as well. Um, Central Park, 7th um, um, Educational Ward. We built a wonderful educational building over there. As you know, there's still um, some things that we're trying to work through. And so one of the things Penny and Brian uh, uh, started with meeting with uh, Saginaw Valley um, State University. And they've come up with, um, uh, I really should let Penny present this. The acronym is RISE, Resiliency and Student and Educators Program. So this is going to be build resiliency not only in our students, but also our staff there. And so, um, you know, that's a pretty stressful building at times still. And so um, it's going to be a really good opportunity to do that. Um, to, in order to do, do that partnership with Saginaw Valley, we will have to commit some 31A or what's called our at-risk fund. If you remember, we received those the first time two years ago and got into that pool of that. Um, we talked about the press box. I'll skip over that one. Um, mental health training I covered. Um, we're going to explore. This MDE has opened up the opportunity to maybe give our kids some extra distinction on their diploma. One was bilingual, and then the other one is the ability to have a seal. Um, excuse me, the bilingual is a seal. The other one is to have an endorsed diploma in STEM, which we both believe we very much match up with the STEM already and are pretty close to the bilingual, so we're exploring those pieces as well. And the last piece I'd like to say is Thank you very much, Angela and Patrick. And so um, I can remember uh, a few years back, um, we called over to the clerk's office and say, well, who's running for the board? And we had a new name pop up, Patrick Fizee, and we knew nothing about him. <laughs> and so um, he, Patrick's been a wonderful member. And, and as, as you know, we don't really let re board members retire or leave. We always find work for them. And we do hope you're back one time, but we always um, use our board members to go forward. So you, once a board member, always a board member, and, and you, you'll stay, and we'll, we'll, we'll lean on you and make some phone calls through the years. Plus, we got three of your young kids still in the system for a while. So. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever you need. Yeah. And then Angela. Um, Angela was a big part of the hiring. I, as I look at the board here, Lynn and Patrick, or Lynn and uh, Scott, you, the, you're the two left that hired me just five and a half years ago. Man, how fast time goes here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Angela, I always well, still want to say to you and Jerry, I was way too easy negotiating with you and Lapeer as I look around contracts. So you, you, you're, corner of that restaurant. you were a good no negotiator, evidently. So, yeah. so thank you very much as well. And um, we'll actually keep you very much involved as well. Excellent. So, I appreciate yeah. that. I'm starting to add it up one day. I think I've worked for about 40 board members now. But um, <laughs> certainly uh, um, this, this has been a very good board to work for and a great community to work for. So I've enjoyed my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this point, uh, we, we will go into closed session. And when we come out of the closed session, we'll actually adjourn the meeting, but there's no need to stay around. If you really want to come out and hear me hit the mallet on the table and close meeting, that's all that will happen. All right, could you so, Pam, thank yeah, you. we have to. Going in for uh, just the purpose to talk about negotiations. <laughs> right, okay, we're going into closed session to talk about negotiations. So you got to take a motion. I'll move. So moved. And support. All right, moved by uh, Fredell, support by Patrick Frizzi. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. All right, this is awesome, you guys. Thank you. I